Hi, everyone. I'm meteorologist Royal Norman. This is Sonoran Sky, a first alert podcast. And one of the interesting things we're going to talk about today is Deadpool. No, not that Deadpool. Deadpool uh, on the lakes that serve Arizona and the Colorado River and the Colorado River Project. We're talking about Lake Powell and Lake Mead, but we're going to focus on Lake Powell. And our guest today, Zach Podmore. Zach, you wrote a book called Life. Is it Life After Death? Yeah, it's no, it's Life After Death Pool, uh, uh, Deadpool, Lake Powell's Last Days. That's ominous. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's a major concern uh, in Lake Powell right now and for the Glen Canyon Dam that we could reach a point known as, as Deadpool uh, when you'd have millions of acre feet of water, billions and billions of gallons of water trapped in Lake Powell, no easy way to get it. Uh, out through the dam, downstream through the Grand Canyon and, and into Lake Mead. And I believe it just recently the U.S. Bureau of Reclamation said there's, I don't know what the chances are, but there's a chance there's going to be Deadpool by the end of 2026. Is that correct? Yeah, uh, there, it gets a little complicated. You have to get into the, the engineering of the dam itself. Right. But basically, there are only three ways to release water through the Glen Canyon Dam. There's the spillways at the very top of the dam that are only used when, when the reservoir is completely fill, uh, filled. They don't, they've only been used a handful of times in the history of, of Lake Powell. Uh, there's the hydropower penstocks, which is the main way that water is released through the dam and into the Grand Canyon that generates the hydroelectricity. And then there's a set of tunnels that are still hundreds of feet above the river level, known as the river outlet works. They're kind of emergency uh, release uh, tunnels that are at what is known as the Deadpool level. So if the Lake Powell were to get to the, the level of, of the river outlet works, um, there's no way to get the water that would be trapped in Lake Powell below that point out through the dam without you know, pumping it over the dam or something like that, uh, which would be very difficult. Um, so when... You, you're talking about 2026, the, the latest uh, projections from the Bureau of Reclamation show that it's possible we could get to what's called a minimum power pool gotcha. next year uh, on, on Lake Powell, which would be the, the level of the hydropower penstocks, uh, the most um, well-engineered uh, tunnels that go through the dam. They've been used for decades and decades at this point. Uh, there's never been any major issues there. Uh, unlike the, the river outlet works, uh, you know, lower down on the dam and the spillways at the top, they've both had uh, major problems when they've been used just a, a handful of days in, in, uh, in the past. So um, you could kind of consider the, the minimum power pool level a kind of dead pool because mm -hmm. it gets very dangerous to let the lake level go below that. So you might have to kind of stop releases right there just to ensure the integrity of the dam. Yeah, in fact, a lot of people, yes, they do use two dead pools, uh, and, but the first one is the penstocks, and the penstocks are bigger. They can hold more water, as you say. They're tested. Um, if we lose the penstocks, we're in serious trouble. Yeah, the just things get riskier and riskier below that. Um, if if a lake level were to fall below the level of the penstocks, uh, you start to have engineering concerns with the dam itself. Um, but also you have water delivery concerns. There's even at a certain point uh, between minimum power pool and dead pool, even if the outlet works are fully open, you can't deliver physically enough water downstream uh, to meet the, the needs of the lower basin, kind of what the, the amount of water that the lower basin, including uh, Arizona and, and Phoenix and Tucson that get water from the Colorado River um, have been used to for a long time now. So the tunnels just aren't big enough to release the amount of water that is um, has been customary uh, uh, at a certain point. Zach, let me ask you this question. If we got close to the penstocks being exposed, aren't there some ways upriver that some reservoirs could release and help the lake? A little bit, but yeah, there's not a ton that can be done. So this was, we were at a similar point to where we are now in 2022. Um, the Lake Powell was dropping very rapidly. We got down to, um, I think, just 30 vertical feet above minimum power pool uh, on Lake Powell in early 2023. And there were major, you know, large scale releases from reservoirs upstream in the Colorado River on the, on the Gunnison uh, River, which flows into the Colorado and on the Green River um, from Flaming Gorge Dam, which also is part of the Colorado River Basin. 
And those releases, you know, decimated the local recreation economy at, at um, on Blue Mesa on the Gunnison River. Uh, it was very difficult for the recreation economy around Flaming Gorge as well. And that uh, amount of water that was released, which was um, just half a million acre feet from, from Flaming Gorge alone, uh, barely made a dent in refilling Lake Powell. So mm. it's it slowed the decline of Lake Powell, which was dropping at a rate of around uh, a foot per week at that point uh, for a few days. But, you know, it, it, it bought like maybe four or five days worth of time in total, um, if that. Not so there's there's really yeah there's not any reservoirs that are big enough upstream to fix the problem by by draining them completely. So I'm going to read this. I just got this data today. The the lake uh, is at 3,356 feet. The minimum power is 3,490. The river bypass outlets, as I'll call them, is 3,370. That would be the final dead pill, if you will. Um, why isn't there a plug at the bottom of this dam? That's a great question. That's the because uh, the, uh, that's thirty three hundred feet up or something like that, right? Yeah, yeah. That there were two giant tunnels that were drilled through the sandstone cliffs around the dam site when the dam was being constructed uh, in in the nineteen fifties. So as the dam was being built, the entire flow of the Colorado River was diverted around the dam uh, through the sandstone cliffs, so they could have a you know, dry place to pour the concrete. But both of those tunnels were filled with reinforced concrete after 1963 when Lake Powell started to fill. Um, so, yeah, there's no there's no outlet at the bottom. That's actually the topic of the first uh, chapter of my book, um, <laughs> talking about what an issue that is. And if we I, th I think uh, it's something we need to consider um, installing again, just to avoid the worst co consequences of sustained drought like we've been seeing in the Colorado River Basin, Well, because um, what... we don't want to end. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, that's one of the things I want to ask you. That's a possibility of installing a lower drain, correct? Yeah, this is uh, something that Floyd Dominey, he's kind of the infamous uh, commissioner of the Bureau of Reclamation or the famous uh, commissioner of the Bureau of Reclamation um, in the 1960s when, when Lake Powell was filling. Um, he actually uh, proposed a, a plan in the 1990s, um, just on a cocktail napkin, talking to some environmentalists uh, to uh, redrill those bypass tunnels at river level around the dam, um, if if it was necessary to um, to get that water out that would otherwise be trapped at Deadpool. And I, it's something that the Bureau of Reclamation uh, has been studying, though the details of that study aren't um, fully public yet. Um, but there's there's definitely a discussion about modifying the dam in some way to add outlets further down on the dam than than they currently exist at. Uh, that's something that uh, California, Arizona, and Nevada um, have all requested the Bureau of Reclamation look into um, as part of their comments uh, under the 2026 guidelines that are being negotiated right now that kind of set the uh, the terms for how the Colorado River is managed. So this is, isn't just a discussion uh, like it was in the 1970s, 80s, 90s, when there were a, you know, a handful of environmentalists saying we need to restore this, this beautiful place uh, that um, was known as Glen Canyon that got drowned under Lake Powell. This is a, a conversation that's being had by, uh, you know, just water managers, very serious water managers themselves, um, that they recognize that the design of the dam um, isn't. Uh, ideal for uh, 25 years of drought like we've seen uh, in the Colorado River Basin. Lake yeah. Powell hasn't been full since 1999. That's, that's amazing. And it seems to me when I think about the consequences of the Colorado River not flowing, that's just, to me, criminal. I can't, oh, that, that I can't imagine awful. it. Yeah, yeah, I can't imagine it. Yeah, yeah. It would, so it would still... Uh, flow even at the dead pool level right. there would still be water flowing through the grand canyon right. it would just be the lowest levels we've we've seen in decades but water would kind of fill into the reservoir and it would pour out by gravity through the dam assuming that there were um, everything was working and you didn't need to close the tunnels for repairs mm -hmm. so there would still be some water moving downstream but um, there would be major concerns about lake mead and the hoover dam reaching Deadpool as well and then um, you know questions of whether there would be enough water to fill uh, canals like the Central Arizona Project, which feed Phoenix and Tucson. Mm -hmm. um, so this, you know, it's 
Lake Powell is mainly experienced by people who love to recreate on, you know, the beautiful blue waters beneath the, the red cliffs that, you know, probably the best houseboat destination in the world. But if the reservoir starts to fail, if the dam starts to fail, um, 27 million people who get water from the Colorado River downstream from the Glen Canyon Dam will start to notice that, um, you know, that the dam is, is not designed in, in the best way for the hydrology we've been seeing. Yeah, and a lot of people don't realize, I just learned this a few weeks ago, that CAP water has very junior rights along the Colorado River. So Arizona would be a place that got impacted probably quite quickly. Yeah, it's hard to say how that exactly would play out. But yeah, part of the deal that Arizona made to get funding for the Central Arizona project was to uh, take junior water rights for the for the um, cap. So it's, um, you know, I, it's it's hard to say exactly what would happen if there wasn't enough water moving down the river to irrigate all the farmland in you know, around Yuma and mm -hmm. in the Imperial Valley, and also to supply Las Vegas and Phoenix and, and Tucson and how it would all work out in the courts of who has to take the cuts and what kind of deals could be made in an emergency situation of you know, sale of irrigation water to cities, perhaps. Um, but it's, it's something that's going to impact uh, every sector um, and you know, all the, the millions of people living down there if we let the situation get uh, to that point. Yeah, so and in, and in fact, avoid that. yeah, and in fact, if it gets to that first penstock area where electricity is generated, there's a whole lot of people dependent on that electricity too. So, I mean, there's a lot of people dependent on that dam working. That's right. Yeah, I'm, the um, hydroelectric production has been in rapid decline. It hasn't, you know, it hit its peak in the in the eighties and nineties, right. but um, last year um, was the lowest amount of electricity produced ever from from the dam in part related to environmental flows that were being done in the Grand Canyon. Um, it's probably not the biggest concern is, is my sense talking okay. to different experts. Okay. Um, you know, I think there wouldn't be blackouts across the Southwest if the dam uh, were to stop producing electricity. But the water is is something that is is very important to, to everybody in, in the Southwest. So in your book, you foresee, uh, you foresee, I Correct me if I'm wrong, a time when there may not be a functional Glen Canyon and that the river above Glen Canyon may get to return to itself. Is that correct? Yeah, so this is kind of the life and the life after Deadpool in the title of my book. The subtitle is The, the Rebirth of the Colorado River. Right. Um, and we have 25 years now of track record to see what happens in this magnificent place called Glen Canyon when... Uh, it's given a chance to recover. So Glen Canyon is, you know, just as beautiful as, as the Grand Canyon. It's a, um, a place people know as, as Lake Powell since the 1960s. But if the dam hadn't been built, it would almost certainly be a national park today. And nobody really knew what to expect as the lake has dropped. Um, what would happen in the side canyons? What would happen to the sediment that's been trapped in Lake Powell? But the ecological recovery there has been um, exceeded everyone's expectations. There's just an incredible diversity of uh, native species moving back in along these side streams that flow into Glen Canyon. Waterfalls have reemerged, arches, natural bridges, um, a, a huge amount of wildlife. You know, there's beavers and bighorn sheep moving back into these canyons that used to be underwater, and uh, the beavers damming the creeks and supporting, you know. Uh, cottonwoods and willows and, and wildflowers. And you would never know in, in some of these areas that have been recovering that they were underwater for 50 years. They look uh, as healthy as any desert uh, ecosystem you've ever seen. And, that, and there's so many beautiful clear streams uh, in the landscape that speed up that recovery. So uh, it wouldn't be a total loss if um, Lake Powell were to disappear. Um, you know, there would be a, a whole new area to explore that used to be able to uh, to jet ski over the top of that now you can go out and you know float the river past and hike up to and then see how these landscapes change when and i think from a water management perspective um there would um if you were designing the system today from scratch the colorado river water delivery system um you would not and you knew the hydrology that we're experiencing right now for the last 25 years with with climate change um you would not 
build uh, the Glen Canyon Dam, or at least you wouldn't build both the Hoover and Glen Canyon Dams, which create the two largest reservoirs in the country. There simply isn't enough water to make those two large reservoirs useful. Um, and in fact, they're causing a lot of problems. So just from a, a water management perspective, you know, ignoring all the history of the Colorado River Compact and the recreational benefits of Lake Powell, uh, if you were just to store all of Lake Powell's water in Lake Mead today, things would operate more smoothly uh, as we see more and more drought. Um, so I, that's, a, that's one factor that's going into these discussions of, of what we should do with the future of, of Lake Powell. It's not just the environmental recovery, but it's the um, it's the benefits to water management if if bypass tunnels were installed around the Glen Canyon Dam. Yeah, and it's sort of a, I mean, it's a long-term thing because no one knows how or when or anything like that. Um, I, I was thinking of the bathtub ring, though. That probably isn't going to go away. Will that, will that ever erode away or the wind blow it away and change colors? Yeah, it's kind of amazing. You can see if you go out there um, and you float past some of these sheer Wingate sandstone walls that come down uh, to the lake level. You can see, yeah, everyone knows what the bathtub ring looks like. It's mm -hmm. on the cover of my book. Uh, anyone who's been out there is very familiar with it. Um, but you can see these streaks of kind of rust colored varnish coming across the, the bathtub ring and, and the places that have been exposed since, uh, or yeah, that haven't reflooded since the year 2000 now, they're, the bathtub ring is healing too. It's, uh, it's disappearing in, in some places faster than others. And in some of the side canyons, you can't see it at all, where there's wow. more water that flows through that area. So, I mean, it's Glen Canyon is never going to look exactly like it did in the 1950s, um, but it is a place that I think we, will surprise people um, who are seeing, you know, the places that have uh, started to recover now, or that um, if the if the lake were to disappear completely. Um, I think people would be surprised by just um, how healthy and, and beautiful the, the landscape is. It's not all just going to be mud and, uh, you know, lawn chairs that blew off a houseboat uh, 40 years ago. <laughs> which I think so there is some of that, too. <laughs> yeah, which I think you said is, is kind of interesting to you when you see some of that stuff as you're, you've been in that area. But let me ask you this. So uh, I know you don't have a crystal ball, but 10 years from now, are we still going to have – do you think a, a Glen Canyon dam operating similar to the way it does, or do you think there'll be changes? I think there needs to be changes. I think we are going, it's, um, if we don't modify the Glen Canyon dam, we are uh, just being negligent in um, our, you know, duties as citizens of the Southwest, uh, as people who, you know, speak to our water managers. Um, I think the, the safest path going forward is to in, at least install lower outlets uh, around the Glen Canyon Dam, preferably at river level. Um, that would allow all the water in Lake Powell to get released if we needed it downstream. Um, but you could, you know, put big gates on those, uh, those tunnels. And if, there, if it suddenly starts snowing again, like it did in the 1980s, and we can fill up Lake Mead and Lake Powell to the brim again, you could close those gates and... Um, still, you know, get the benefit of the storage in Lake Powell. Um, but if if things go the way that most models show them going, um, we are running a huge risk if we if we don't take proactive steps to uh, mitigate the worst effects of, of Deadpool. And I think that needs to, I mean, the studies are happening now, but I think the conversation needs to be a lot louder. And, uh, we need to get, you know, ready to at least have those uh, modifications in place if we ever need them. Well, one of the places, folks, you can uh, start that conversation is Zach's book, uh, Life After Deadpool, Lake Powell's Last Days. Uh, Zach Podmore, I appreciate you being on. It, you know, really interesting stuff. I could, I'm going to have you back on because I could talk to you for hours and hours and hours about this whole topic. It's so super interesting to me. But I think what I love is the idea that Mother Nature, Mother Nature is reviving itself, and that's a good thing. Oh, yeah, it's, it's amazing to see, and it gives me a lot of hope. So, yeah, thank you so much for having me on. Thanks, Zach.